What's up, y'all? It's Mari here with First Updates Now, and I'm here with 2539, the Krypton Cougars. They're from the Mid-Atlantic District, and they won both of the events that they went to, as well as were finalists at their championships, which is super cool. I'm overall in love with the color scheme. It's a gorgeous robot, and let's dive on in. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Get your off-season events an additional 25 to 100% more viewership by streaming it on fun. We'll donate our Twitch or YouTube channel and help promote your event. Contact admin at firstupdatesnow.com to reserve your off-season date. We're going to start off with Vic here, and he's going to talk about their drive base. So let's get on into it. Okay. This year, we're again using Mark IVs. We've done them, used them in the past. Uh, what's different this year is we've moved to the Mark IV with the L4 ratio, so we are moving faster but also just kind of with drive base we did make actually custom machined weight plates on the very bottom of the robot and that actually helps us keep a very low center of mass when we have this very tall arm super cool loving the fact that you're trying to keep a low center of gravity to make sure that everything goes over smoothly but let's go on into the intake tell us a little bit about that can it do both cunes and combs so moving on to the intake we actually have two intakes and the one we're going to talk about now is on the back, and we'll talk about our gripper later. This is built solely for cubes, and we will pick them up from the ground near the station. And once we've picked them up, we can either pass them through to our front intake, or we can place them in hybrid very easily and quickly. It's just simply two rollers with our back plates. Like to demo it? Yeah, can we get a demo, please? That would be so cool. <laughs> Awesome. So was those um, little things that push it more into it, was that always on the intake or was that something that you guys had to put in after like a couple of so things? These are 16 thick uh, polycarb flaps and they were implemented once we were first picking up cubes. We were having problems with pass through. So the cube would not be centered enough and we wouldn't be able to grab it with our gripper. So we put them in to try and center that cube more and they've worked really well with some slight modifications since their initial addition. We've also slicked over the wheels on the bottom with some tape to aid with that pass through. That's pretty cool. It's always good to see some innovation during the design process. Now, Vic, can you tell us a little bit about y'all's arm? Quite interested in that. This year we have a two link arm with a wrist, uh, elbow joint almost, and a butt a joint on the bottom. Both of the actual elbow joint and the bottom joint are controlled at the bottom with falcons and blue Andy Martin gearboxes, which again helps us keep a lot of the weight very low compared to other arms. And then we have a wrist motor that will actually keep it center out central but also actuates our wrist with our gripper. We use through bore encoders that will actually tell us the position of all of the different links in the arm so that we can control so with software where everything is and how it gets there. So you all got presets. I yes. guess we'll talk about that a little bit later with Weaver, right? Yes. Yep. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now, on to y'all's gripper. You mentioned that you're getting, you use that to get it from the um, cube intake. Is the gripper also doubles as your cone intake? Uh, yes. So on our gripper, we designed it so that we can handle both cubes and cones. It uses pneumatic c cylinders to open and close so we can get a tight grip on whether it's a cube or a cone. And then we have powered wheels on it so we can draw in the cube or cone. And that allows us to grab from the single substation or the double substation or the ground. And we can also pass through from our intake with a cube into the gripper. That's pretty cool. So you said that you do use that um, intake over there as only for cubes. Do you ever use your gripper as also an intake for cubes or is it mostly your cone intake? Uh, our gripper is mostly our cone intake. We, early in the season, we'd used it for picking up cubes off of the ground, 
However, we have since transitioned to using only the ground intake as we can now pass through the robot. Okay, that's pretty cool. But I'm kind of interested in your presets now. So can you show us a little bit of that, that about how you guys are able to like get your cones and stuff like that? Yeah, so coming out of the single substation, um, we actually have an aim to the cone. So this limelight right here can actually see the cone in the single substation. So we use that to align so that you can see how it was blinking yellow there. It actually can't see this cone, but if it's in the single substation, it can align with the human player holding it. So that's how we're able to line up with the single substation. And we also use that camera, we also use that limelight for depth perception at the end of the, at the edge of the grid. If we're looking to uh, place on a far grid node, then we can't necessarily get the depth perception when we're on the other side of the grid. So we use that for alignment just on the edge, on the uh, ends of the grid. Now this camera and another camera on the back connected to photon vision, this one right here. These are both running um, for April tags. So that helps with the uh, correct positioning during uh, autonomous and during the match as well. Then our camera on the back here, this Limelight 3, is actually connected to Google Coral right here on the back of it. And that can see uh, game pieces on the field. So we can use that to have a centered pickup on the cube using that um, cube intake. That's pretty the front. cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, next with this arm, this arm is heavier than some. Uh, it's light, but it's heavier than some. So the way we control it is we actually compensate for physics on every single joint of the arm. So we compensate for gravity constantly. Uh, and that allows us to hold any position, even if this is a little bit heavy. We also have our gas shocks here that help us with stabilizing the movement. Mm. And I can demo some presets here for you. Just make yes, sure to please. stay out of the way. I'll try my best. So this would be mid. Right, so we're placing, we're about to place this cone on mid, right, like there. Here's high. Oh, I accidentally disabled. Okay, uh, here's high. Yep. Um, and I'm not gonna do a ground intake because we're not, we're not gonna go there. Um, but here it would be a uh, double substation pickup as well. Now notice here, you can actually see um, there's a red light on the, uh, on the sensor. That means it can see the cone. So I'm going to bring the arm back down. But those sensors tell us these are both proximity sensors, and we have two on the lower intake as well. And that allows us to know when we have a game piece in either gripper, or in the gripper or the intake at any time. So that allows us to write our autos uh, without having to worry about timing. We know when there's a game piece. We know when we can hand off to the gripper, and we know when we can place. So there's nothing, we never have to waste time on anything because it can just get the timing right. And that is super cool. That probably took a lot of time to like get everything figured out, didn't it? Honestly, the longest period of time was getting the, uh, getting the center positioning right so that we could see the most range with everything. We also oh, wow. have these LEDs that allows us to signal. Um, so it allows us to signal to the human player. Uh, if we look right here, cube cone um, and then also during either of our assist things here if we're aiming we have blinking yellow and it'll turn green once it's aimed correctly and then you may want to look down here in the front of the robot I'm going to disable and you can see we actually have robot signal lights so these lights down here the three white lights tell us this is for the technician when we're loading onto the field the three signal lights tell us that all three through bore uh, encoder uh, sensors are working. We've had situations where one of them was not working and we needed to repair it. Otherwise, we would not be able to control the arm correctly. So we can see that there. This orange light tells us that we're connected to the driver station. And these, the purple is for pressure and the green is for battery. So that is a basically a quick technician checklist to make sure that everything's going to work during the match wow. when they're loading on. That is something that I have not seen before that is actually so useful. I think that a lot of teams would definitely benefit from having something like that on there. And I know I've, I've, seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of teams with candles as well. So 
it, really? our code's public and it's definitely a very useful feature we've been able to make use of looking onto the field. Wow. Well, I will definitely be telling my own personal team as well as others that I come into to definitely check that out. But thank you so much for letting us interview you guys. Once again, this has been 2539, the Crips on Cougars, signing out with First Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.